and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kauai Foundation. I'm Ahu K. Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today in Honolulu, Hawaii. It's a beautiful day in paradise, and we got a beautiful guest on the show, so let's go on, go on over here and meet him. Hono. Aloha. Aloha. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Good to have you on Voices of Truth. We wanted to have you on, on the show for quite a while because you're a very interesting guy. You do a lot of stuff for the Hawaiian sovereignty movement, for the Hawaiian independence movement, both behind the scenes but also in a very public way. And a lot of the stuff you do, practically all the stuff you do, is media-based, yes? Uh, yeah. I, I, well, I do a lot of behind-the-scenes things, too, but I basically I try and focus on media, and uh, I find that it's a great uh, avenue to kind of get uh, get the word out. Get the word out. Exactly. I know. I know because uh -huh. I get all your emails. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you on Facebook. I see you on MySpace. I see you on Maui World, which is the Hawaiian version of MySpace. Right. I guess it's easier to see where I don't see you. But you're on all the social networking sites spreading the word to the world, literally, right. about the Hawaiian independence movement. So let's start out by, I want to ask you, what got you interested in the movement? And then what got you... What gave you the idea that I could take this message and put it over here? Because before, in the old days, you know, to spread a message, you had to put it on TV or newspaper, right. write letters, tell people, give lectures, all that stuff. But now everything has changed. Yeah, it has to the internet. It's Isn't it amazing? Open, oh. Yeah. So how did you get involved in this? What made you want to start doing this? <laughs> Actually, I kind of started out. my. My children uh, got me started on the computer. Uh, basically, I had no idea how the sucker worked or anything. And there are little wheezes on it. And so I kind of picked it up. And I got involved in a, a program. Uh, it's basically like a, a Adobe workshop program. Right. Uh, it's called uh, um, oh, Paint Shop Pro. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was a long time ago. Yes, right? and they were offering it uh, through the line for free. You could download it and mess with it. And I found that uh, I was able to get out some of those things that were locked up in my head and put them all onto graphics and put so it out there. Images, pictures. Exactly. That, you know, you could you could create stuff, pictures and images online right. using this program. Yes. I remember your work. It was dazzling. It, it, it took me a long time to get to that. In fact, uh, it got to a point where I was I, I self-taught myself on that. Wow. And then I discovered that they actually had groups that were showing you how to do it. And so I got involved in a couple of groups and ended up ending up uh, as one of the... Tutors? Yes. Wow. So wait a minute. You taught yourself first. Right. And then you turned around and started to teach others. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. It's, it was a, a passion that I had. I, you know, everybody loves art, and it gives you a, it gives you another outlet. You know, to when you got so much things bogging, everybody's got a hobby, and it, that turned out to be one of my hobbies, I guess. Yeah, but see, what you said there is important because there's a distinction. For most people, it turns into a hobby. For you, it crossed the line into your passion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was another way of me utilizing my passion and incorporating my messages into that artwork and having other people take a look at it and seeing the same thing that I was feeling. Yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, you have your own Facebook page. Yeah. It's actually, no, that's not actually, true. You I have, have two, two because <laughs> <laughs> the first one has over 5,000 fans and they cut you off, so you have to start a second page. Right. Right. And you're on MySpace, you're on Maui World, what else? Um, <clears throat> gee, I put out a lot of work on Olelo. Right. Uh, that's another outlet that I have. Uh, La local access TV here yeah, in Hawaii. Exactly. Yeah, uh, kind of like Oahu. a PBS. Yeah, yeah kind of like a PBS for this island. Well, but actually, you, you can now you can uh, locate it on your computer anywhere. Anywhere in, anywhere in the world. Ololo.org. Yeah. Ololo right. But the other place you put a lot of stuff up, I notice, is on YouTube. Yes. Every <clears throat> every event where there's something happening, right. this guy is there I with, try his, to be. with his camera. 
It's, you know, what I want to ask you is, when do you sleep and when do you eat? <laughs> uh, I, I think that it's so important. When you talk to the people who live here in the islands, there's so many things that are flying over the head. And they have no idea exactly how the people who are truly affected are feeling. So in other words, they don't know what's really going on. Exactly. And you saw it as your mission that because of your skills right. and because of the creation of the internet, you could combine those two to do exactly what you said, get the word out, let others know how other people, primarily dispossessed people, right. are really feeling, what it feels to be them on, and, and, and on the receiving end of this stuff. Correct, yeah. Wow. And it was kind of amazing because I was involved, but not as extreme as the last several years. Uh, my children were having problems in uh, public school, uh, my middle and my youngest. Uh, they were flunking school. Uh, they did actually in grade school, but uh, intermediate and high school, they started hanging around with the wrong people. You know, they would get eight students in elementary. All the teachers spoke highly of them. And they seemed to, in the media high school, they seemed to spiral down. So something changed. Yeah. What was that? I guess maybe it was the attention that they were receiving in class. It could be, it could be the crowd that they're hanging around with. Uh, where I live, they have, they've been, I live, my, my front door neighbor is a military base. Wow. It's uh, Kaneohe Marine Corps, part of Kaneohe Marine Corps base located in Pearl City. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of the families uh, that are, uh, where the husband or wife work on the submarines or SEAL teams or things like that. And so they get a lot of uh, military influence through there and not so much uh, being able to get the, the culture and the, the local information that they need. So how did that affect you? You had two kids who were, were doing well in school and then all of a sudden they They spiraled they down. Yeah. yeah. How did that... There was, they, they actually, they flunked. Uh, one, my middle one was uh, hurting herself, cutting herself. Uh, Hanging around the wrong crowd, not going to school. My youngest one uh, flunked and uh, wasn't turning in the work. And it was a chore just trying to get him out of bed to get the motivation to get to school. Right. And I never had that problem in grade school. Right. So, and, uh, so as a Hawaiian father with Hawaiian kids, that must have upset you quite a bit, right? Oh, yeah, very and much. So because I was a dropout myself. I pulled out of school in the 11th grade. And basically, uh, I had an option to work in a very good uh, job, working like this job, and the so, money was there, so. So, as a father who was a dropout yourself, right. you saw this whole syndrome beginning to happen again. Exactly. And you went, oh my goodness, it happened to me, but I'm not going to let it happen to my kids. Right. Yeah. I had a, a cousin who the charter schools had just started in Hawaii, and it was one of the first charter schools. Native Hawaiian charter schools. Yes. And Halau Lokahi. Yeah. Where and everything is taught according to Hawaiian cultural exactly. values in the language. Exactly. All that stuff. Yeah. So they were telling me to get my children into there. Mm -hmm. She was telling me to get, she got her children in, and she said there was a big change, and you got to check it out. And so. I never heard of charter schools, and I didn't know what it was about. I was thinking, you know, some kind of special ed school or something you know, similar to that. Mm -hmm. And I was really kind of amazed because no, no sooner than about a couple of weeks after, they did a total turnaround. It was like somebody turned on the light switch. Wow. And their passion for learning, going to school, and just their personal habits, but also how they treated other people. It, it was a night and day situation. It just blew me away. It's flipped right around. Exactly. Amazing. And the school that I was involved with, 
they were a frontline school as far as getting involved in Hawaiian issues mm -hmm. and things that were attacking uh, the Hawaiian culture. And so it's at this school where they came across the internet, yes? Yes. And so they learned the internet and then they taught their dear old dad how to do it. Right. And just like the lights went on in their head when they went to the school, what they taught you, the lights went on in your head to see how you could adapt that for the Hawaiian movement, yes? Well, they, they kind of taught me in, uh, in the elementary is when they first started. What this uh, charter school did was it kind of re how I saw them stepping up to the plate and defending the Hawaiian issues. Gotcha. Really, you know, it tore up my heart because this is something that I always wanted to do and I always been feeling, but I thought I was alone. And I realized that, you know, you're no longer, more, no you're longer, longer alone. alone. Yeah. And that it, it, it not only counted to other people, but it also counted to yourself. It showed that at least you did something. So you, your kids got back on track. Right. You begin to learn through them the power of the, the internet. Right. You begin to discover social media. Correct. You also, because of the school that they went to, realized, hey, wait a minute, I'm not alone in the things that I'm passionate about, Native Hawaiian causes. Right. All those things started to come into, fit into place, fall into place. And yet, every time you opened up the front door of where you live and looked out your front door, you saw something that was totally opposite of all that, right? Well, you know, yeah, I have the military sentries that are located right out my front door and the American flag is flying right in my face. So <laughs> I opened the door, that's my good morning right there. So, uh, it helps to give me the drive to do what I do. But it's also uh, looking at my children and thinking about their children and their children's children yeah. and what kind of world they're going to have. What, what kind of Hawaii this is uh, going to be for the well, future? Well, I, I kind of look more globally because as I believe everything is connected. But yeah, especially with Hawaii, I believe if we can make a right in Hawaii and get back on track, we might be able to set a domino effect towards the rest of the world. You're absolutely right. This is, this can be the example for the rest of the world. It could be. And yet, as we stand here now and speak, Hawaii is the most heavily militarized piece of real estate anywhere on earth. That's right. So on one hand, here's what it could be. On the other hand, here's what it is. And a guy like you comes along and says, my goodness, how can I do my part to close that gap? Right. Yeah. Fascinating. Exactly. So that's when you really begin to use the internet to get your message out right. about the pl plight of Native Hawaiians, as well as what the future could be like. Yeah. And spreading it out to the world so, you, so people around the world, no matter where they live, can put themselves in Hawaiian shoes and see and feel what it's like <laughs> to live under that right. day after day. You know, Pono, I'm, I'm, I'm struck by what you're saying because as I'm listening to you talk about the U.S. military, the heavy U.S. military presence here on this island of Oahu, and I look right over there, there it is, there's Pearl Harbor. There's Pearl Harbor. And this is just one, this is a huge complex but it's one of many, 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 many hundreds yes. of military installations just on this island. That's correct. We're not talking about the other Hawaiian islands, oh, just no. this one just island. Just this one island. In fact, I believe about 50, 56% of this island is, mili is, uh, is military. Is military. <sighs> so that's awakening. Uh, but it's also knowing that uh, this Pearl Harbor, it's been, uh, this is a bed, bed bracket basket for the Kanaka Mo'oli before they were so-called discovered. So and we had close to about a million people back then. Right. And this could easily, this was feeding our nation. We had a kawa that was taking care of them. We had no high-tech things. Now we have everything that's imported. Basically, it makes our farmland is no longer feasible to have farmland here because the prices were undercut 
by them bringing food in. Right. But also the prices of the land here makes it not feasible to be re uh, using it as agricultural land. You're building tracked houses. Uh, there you go. So let me see if I understand this. But before the uh, before the Westerners, the white yes. men came to Hawaii, there were about a million people living here yes. on the islands. About, about almost the same exact numbers there <laughs> exactly, are today. Exactly, right. And yet not one piece of food was imported into Hawaii. Exactly. All the food that was grown, that people ate, was grown here or caught here. Right. Or farmed here. Right. And this area right over here was one of the bread baskets of this island. It exactly. fed an enormous amount of people. You bet. So everything was in harmony and it worked. Yes. All of a sudden, a foreigner comes in, they take the land, they destroy the bread baskets, they militarize it, they pave over the farmlands that previously fed people, build tracked housing so more foreigners could come in and live right. here. And now today, while we have the same number of people live in Hawaii, we now import over 90% of our food. Correct. I see the same effect that's happening here, happening all over the Pacific, all over the world for that matter. As far as people's culture and living lifestyles are being run over by globalization, mm -hmm. basically big corporations moving in, raping resources and doing the same thing that's done over here. Yeah, again, Hawaii being a microcosm of what's happening around the rest of the exactly. world. Exactly. It may have, it may just, the only difference may be it happened here sooner. Right. Yeah. And it's continuing to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not like it has stopped. Right. It's getting and, worse and worse, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it is. And it, we, <laughs> they're trying to push through this thing called uh, a cockabill. And a lot of people, there, there's really no information about it. But you have some people that are in the right places that are pushing it out as a benefit to Hawaiians that, oh, you'll benefit more from uh, federally funded programs. You'll be actually recognized. Yeah. A lot of people have no idea that we are a sovereign nation. We're sitting on our entitled sovereignty and for us to give it up and turn it over to the United States, as you can see what they've done with the Indians, billions and billions of dollars basically <laughs> missing land, deeds, everything, yeah. history. Yeah. It, it's, it's the whole thing all over again. So it sounds to me like a, a, a rather large issue like the Akaka Bill. You know, yeah. the, the plan to turn Native Hawaiians into Native Americans, make them exactly. Indians, right. is tailor-made for a guy like you because you can put the word out that that actually is uh, a very bad choice. It is. And you can go online and get the word out to many, many people, which I know you have because I've seen I try. You. I've seen, well, <laughs> some people try, you do, let me tell you. So, Pono, you, we've talked about the globalization yes. and how it seems to be happening everywhere, but it's like Hawaii is a microcosm in like a preview of coming attractions to the rest of the planet, if you will. Right. It's not stopped happening here, like you said, but no. getting worse and worse and exactly. worse. And one of the things, you know, there's certain um, effects or results that happen as a result of that. And one of the things I know that you're passionate about that is a result of that is is homelessness here in Hawaii, yes? Yeah, I, I, again, I got to redirect that. It's not actually homelessness, it's houselessness. Aha, uh -huh. so tell us what the difference is. Because this is our home. Ah. So, so even though people, people are living in this park here right. who are houseless, yeah? Right. And they're in their home, their homeland, the Hawaiian kingdom. Right. But they just don't have a house, a roof over their head. Yes, and the way that it's become now, they're getting kicked from place to place, having their, what little belongings they do have basically grabbed from them, uh, shuffled off to uh, other places. They'll be put maybe into little uh, temporary uh, homeless shelters where everything that they had is basically uh, discarded. And they only stay there for a short while, then set back on the street. And it's a revolving cycle. So now we come back to Pono, the internet guy. So what, you know, that's something that I can tell really upsets you. Right. What do you plan to do about that using the tools and communication paths that you have? Again, I put out a lot of videos on Olelo, which helps to get it 
out more to the local people. You have so many people over here that have been conditioned or basically what I would call sheeple. Uh, they, they, sheeple, that's sheeple. a combination of sheep and people. Correct. Meaning people who just blindly follow without There thinking. you go, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's it. Sheeple, yeah. Okay. And we don't have any of those watching the show, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the majority of the Americans. Yeah. It's not just uh, here in Hawaii, but it's America itself, I believe. The, the majority over there yeah. is all geared on the same thing. They don't realize that the HEVA program that the USA has been up to and is doing, where they have basically over 800 some odd bases throughout the world. They have their own little empire. Mm -hmm. But it's really evident here because Hawaii is so small exactly. that, you know, in the U.S., the U.S. is so large, it's easy to hide those bases because right. there's so much land. Here, that's not true. No, it's not. And so it goes right back to what you're saying, is, which is there's so much U.S. military here. The U.S. presence is so large that they're literally sucking up and using like a giant vacuum cleaner right. all the resources. Exactly. And so the people that are left with nothing are the first people yes. of this land. Yeah. So you get the word out on YouTube and you, 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 you show through video and whatnot, to people, maybe to even sheeple, right. what's happening in hopes that you wake I them try, up. Yeah. Yeah. The, this, yeah. And I have to keep on keeping in mind that a lot of these people, it's like you put it, they're looking through a keyhole and I'm already in the room. So and they can't see everything they, you see. They can't see everything that I yeah. see. Yeah. So I need to keep that in thought when I put out things. A lot of it just comes straight from my heart. And so again, if anybody's watching on Facebook, you hear me rant and rave, you know why. It's because it tears me. It tears my heart yeah. to see what's done to a people with aloha, people behind this aloha. And what aloha has been turned into has been for profit. For commercialization. Exactly. Yes. Well, you're obviously very good at what you do. And I'll tell you what the why I say that the evidence is because you have so many people on your Facebook page. You had to start a second one. It's like a movie that debuts in the theater and it's shown to packed houses. You have a packed house in your theater called your Facebook page. A lot of people, a lot of people pay attention to what you say and do, not only on, on your two Facebook pages, but MySpace and Maui emails, World, yeah. Maui World, and, and YouTube, and, and 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 all those places. It's amazing. So, Pono, let's let's wind this thing up by allowing me to ask you this question. Sure. You've come a long way, right. and you've made sure that your kids have come a long way, and you, they're going to go places where maybe you can only we can only dream of. People watching this show today, who watch you. And maybe some of them are sheeple, who knows? They may be sitting there saying, well, he did all that himself, but I'm just little old me. I could never do that. What would you say to them? <laughs> yeah, I'm 50 years old. That's about half a century. I remember when I was a small kid holding my heart with my hand and looking at that star spangled rag and pledging my so-called allegiance. I didn't realize that it was to my genocider, to my terrorists. And it's so funny how it just kind of flips the book where finally on my 50th birthday, I basically, <laughs> I said goodbye to that chain and ball routine. I'm a Hawaiian national. I've basically gave up my United States, whatever you want to call it, uh, citizenship. I stand where I am and I'll die a proud Hawaiian. I'll die as a patriot, spreading the truth and fighting for what I believe is my freedom mm. and my right to speak the truth and to stand up for what is porno. Because I went through hell <laughs> and back. My father committed suicide when I was seven. Wow. I had a lot of hate in me. Wow. I was 
drinking, drugs, the whole nine yards. And I think it was kind of just me coming to terms with myself and realizing who I am and being standing up and being the father for my children that I never had. And so that's the, my main drive, is to make sure that my children and their children's children will have the kind of Hawaii that I used to remember mm. and trying to work to get that back. A voyage of rediscovery. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Let's leave it there. Pono, oh. mahalo for being on the show. Thank you very much. Oh, I mahalo to you. And mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24-7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com. I'm at Huke Kahu Cardwell, and until next time, ahui ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.